Oh my gosh, how cool was that? So that was Anthem. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the show. But welcome everybody to EA Play. I'm Andrea Renee, and while you might recognize me from the gaming community, I'm kind of a new face around here. So this year, EA wanted to change things up because they know that I'm both a gamer and a fan. So they invited me to come and host the show. And I think this year is gonna be a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you're ready. Because we're about to kick the press conference off. But before we do that, EA Play is more than just the show you're about to watch. Right behind these doors, there is a fan fest outside, and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are hundreds of community members from all over the world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions of the games that we're going to be showing off here today. But before we can get to that, we've got some reveals, of course. We're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now, I know Trevor Noah gave you the first look. Yeah, we can clap it up. Last month, but we've got some new stuff to show you today. Then we're going to move on to FIFA 19. And boy, big news, you guys. Any World Cup fans? You guys excited? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Then we've got two new indie games to share, and then I'm gonna come back towards the end of the show with some of my favorite developers to give you guys a nice, meaty look at Anthem. And of course, yeah, we got the woos for Anthem, I'm into it. You wanna, you wanna do this with me? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be fun, you guys, if I told you all the secrets at once, right? Well, give, give him a break, he needs to just enjoy the show. So without further ado, let's get things started. Right, it's time to kick this thing off. It's been two weeks since the reveal of Battlefield 5. And you know what? It's been exciting, it's been a lot of speculation, and so many brilliant remixes of a reveal trailer. But there's also been lots and lots of questions from the community. And we've heard you, you want to see more gameplay innovations. You want to know how customization actually works, and you want to know more about our take on the Second World War. So today, we'll show you more gameplay and why this is the deepest and most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to dive and smash through windows to surprise your enemies. Where previously defenses were stationary, you will now be able to move these weapons around on the battlefield and gain advantages. And our renowned destruction system is back and more impactful than ever. So, well, you can't really hide from those pesky tanks anymore as they come chasing you for you, as they rip through those buildings. And you will now be able to customize your soldiers, your vehicles, and your weapons, not only for the gameplay, but for the looks, as part of our portrayal of the Second World War. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in Battlefield 5. You're going to see a lot more of our new gameplay systems here at EA Play from our community. So let's talk about our single player in War Stories. Yes, let's do that. So we want to tell you about those untold stories that got us excited to start with on this game. It's about what you will see is really those moments of human heroism. It is about witnessing the war through the eyes of the men and the women who shaped the world forever. Real and, real and relatable people facing the brutality of war. We started off by an exclusive look at uh, the Nordlis war story over at the Xbox briefing tomorrow. Thanks, that's something not to miss tomorrow. So, our launching October is just the beginning you will all go on an expanding journey through the Second World War. No loot boxes, no premium pass. <laughs> Every day will bring something new. And as part of that journey, after launch, 
you'll get something I know a lot of you have been asking for. Mm -hmm. It's Royale. <laughs> it's, it's Royale reimagined for Battlefield. So we bring those pillars of Battlefield with destruction, team play, vehicles into this new experience. So we will bring you experience that you haven't played before in Battlefield or anywhere else. But more about that later this year. So with that, it's time to show you what makes Battlefield so special. It's the unmatched intensity of our multiplayer sandbox, and this time, it's even more epic, fighting across multiple maps and modes. Welcome to your next Battlefield experience, and this is your first look at ground operations. And this time, even featuring music. <laughs> Quando eu era criança, sempre sonhei em tornar-me um campeão. É preciso determinação e vontade de vencer. Até mesmo nos momentos mais difíceis, tu tens de continuar a acreditar. Esta é a tua oportunidade de te mostrar ao mundo. Tu és um campeão. That's the UEFA Champions League, the pinnacle of club football, where the world's best clubs compete and icons of the game like Gerard and Cruyff cemented their legacies. The world's biggest league joins the world's game. And a special thanks to the legendary Hans Zimmer and LA's own Vince Staples for collaborating with us on the trailer. And I really love the trailer because it captures our epic vision for how the Champions League comes to life in FIFA 19. And Lena's going to tell you a little bit more about that. 
As Aaron said, the UEFA Champions League is an amazing addition for the game. It's where football's biggest heroes like Ronaldo and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where champions rise. And you've been asking for this for a long time, and we are thrilled that it's here. And that's why we're bringing the Champions League across the game. There'll be an authentic Champions League tournament mode. Your club will chase this trophy in career mode. Alex Hunter will pursue Champions League glory in your story mode, the journey. And in FIFA Ultimate Team, there'll be live and authentic Champions League content. And we'll share more details on that along with all our other Ultimate Team features later this summer. And all that's just the beginning. As you know, the heart and soul of FIFA is gameplay. And this year, we're giving you the tools to control the pitch in every moment from your tactical approach to the match to each technical touch. And we know how passionate you are about gameplay, so we've worked hard to shape and refine our vision for FIFA 19 with input from our community. From hands-on tests with beginners to detailed feedback sessions with FIFA pros. And we're gonna be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer, but what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar in gameplay was raised yet again this year. So we look forward to everybody experiencing the game on the hands-on sessions this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited for everybody to play it when we launch on September 28th. And that's our FIFA 19 news headlined by the UEFA Champions League. But I just wanted to take a minute to pause and reflect. <laughs> Standing next to this trophy is a little bit surreal. You know, growing up, there's two iconic trophies that every young player dreams of winning. And for your club, it's this one, the pursuit of Champions League glory. But for your country, it's this trophy, <laughs> the World Cup. And with the tournament starting in just five days, we're excited for the world to compete for it in FIFA 18. As you can imagine, all of us on the FIFA team can't wait for the start of the World Cup. And we want to celebrate with FIFA 18 players, which is why we've just updated the game with a free World Cup experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country like mine, Iceland, who would have thought that a nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify? And you can feel their excitement. Apologies to any England fans in the room, that might still sting. <laughs> <laughs> and Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there. We want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and on PC through Origin Access. Yeah, you can download and play the entire game right now for free. Yeah. So to kick off the trial, we've got some of the world's biggest creators who are going to be playing live at the end of the show, representing their nations in a little mini World Cup tournament. And this summer will bring so much more for FIFA fans. Plenty of FIFA 18 content centered around the World Cup, and we'll bring you all the details on FIFA 19. But in the meantime, let's all enjoy the World Cup. Thank you, and Auf Rabistan! It is the big day on the biggest stage at the World Cup. Good morning. EA Sports FIFA 19. You know, the FIFA community never rests. 20 million people from 60 countries playing in competitive leagues this year. 
Well, the FIFA team never rests either, bringing the Champions League and the World Cup and so much other greatness to FIFA this year. We can't wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome you to EA Play. It's our third EA Play and our second one in Hollywood, and we couldn't be more excited to have you with us to share all the games that we have to show you. We've got lots to do, but before we, get, before we move on, I'd like to share just a couple of things. The greatest disruption to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is the combination of streaming plus subscription. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books has never been easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment to extend our thinking and extend our pioneering into this cloud gaming world. For many people, that's going to mean extending the experiences they already play on our partner platforms. For others, it's going to mean new games and new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games anywhere, anytime. So this week, we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Now, it's not quite ready for full market prime time yet, but it is a promise of what we hope to bring you in the future. The second part of that, of course, is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago, and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have full access to a great catalog of games. Today, we're announcing Origin Access Premiere. So three things you need to know about it. Origin Access Premier will bring you all of our new PC games, starting with Madden NFL, back on the PC for the first time in over a decade. <laughs> then FIFA 19, Battlefield 5, and of course Anthem. And there'll be many more titles in the years to come. Second, you get access to The Vault, our library of over 100 games from EA and other publishers. And third, it will launch later this summer. So that's a little later in the year, but if you want to get started right now and experience the benefits and joys of subscription, come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Thank you and have a great show. What's up? So I'm here sitting inside the crowd at EA Play, and I just happened to find Mr. Vince Ampella here in the audience from Respawn. What's going on, Vince? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I love this stuff. I love seeing new games. I mean, someone's super excited about that man on PC, right? Yeah! Woo! So, um, you guys may have seen that uh, Vince was tweeting yesterday, and there has been a bunch of speculation. So, uh, well, you want to just get right to it? Sure. I mean, we're not ready to show all of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. The teams are kicking ass. But we wanted to bring a little tidbit. So, we've been working with Lucas on getting the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be, and we're going to talk about it right now. Oh, you guys got any guesses? I bet you the, the internet is going wild right now. I hope so. <laughs> so the Star Wars name is Jedi Fallen Order. Woo! -hoo! So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, so it kind of gives you some idea that you'll be playing a Jedi. All so right. does that mean I get to, like, hold a lightsaber? 
Yes. <laughs> so Vince, you got, a, you got anything else? Well, it takes place during the dark times, trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedis are being hunted, so it's going to be spectacular. So for all the, like, the hardcore nerds out there who want to know like, where in the timeline, like, what, between which episodes is it? Between three and four. Okay. All right. Between three and four. That sounds like a nice time. You got it, uh, any other tidbits? No, it's, it's not a nice time. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> Bad time. Does that mean this could just be all dark and serious? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I think people are now anxiously want to know, like, what, when can we play the game? Uh, it will be holiday of next year, 2019, not this year. So, sorry to dash any hopes. No. <laughs> but now that we know, we can set expectations. We're all going to be amped up. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from, more from you maybe, uh, maybe next year. Oh, yeah. Well, Vince, <laughs> it was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Uh, we do have a little bit more news on Star Wars, so I'm going to toss it over to Dennis. Hello there. My name is Dennis. I work at DICE in Stockholm on Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm really happy and excited to be here today, so thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. So we launched our game in November of last year, and clearly we didn't get it quite right. So instead of coming out of the gate sprinting like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and make sure that we were delivering the game that our players really wanted. So we decided to completely overhaul our progression system and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for players to collect instead. So from there, we added a new hunt mode inspired by the original Battlefront games that I loved personally, starting with the Ewoks on Endor. And <laughs> thank you. Uh, we, um, it turned out to be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building Ewok Hunt. So as you might know, we're currently in our Han Solo season with content from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous place, and it features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So looking forward a little bit, this summer we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. We're also adding a new Starfighter mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. And looking ahead a little bit more, we will also be delivering a new large-scale multiplayer sandbox experience focused around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out capital ships. But that's not all. We know that you have been asking for new heroes, villains, and planets from a certain era that features a very iconic Star Wars conflict, so I'm excited to confirm that Battlefront 2 this year will be going deep into the Clone Wars. It's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis, featuring multiple levels, including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let me introduce the most powerful droid, <laughs> the leader of the most powerful droid army in the galaxy, General Grievous. And yes, he will be going up against my own personal favorite, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Finally making his debut in Battlefront after all these years. So, but we're, we're not done, that's not it. They will not come alone. Joining them is the Dark Lord and leader of the Separatist Alliance, Count Dooku as well as someone to bring balance to the Force, Obi-Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> the team at home is extremely excited to be building all of these cool things. EA and DICE are committed to Battlefront. We had a rough start, but I really think that this game has a bright future. 
Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you, may the force be with you, and enjoy the rest of E3. Thanks. Hi, it's, it's really good to see you. Uh, in Unravel, we used yarn to symbolize love and the bonds between people. In our new game, we, we tear that bond up right at the start. You lose everything, including your spark. But when things are at their darkest, you find hope and you form a new bond, and your spark is rekindled, and it leads you off on an adventure. So welcome to Unravel 2. It's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two little souls who refuse to give up and who build something new and beautiful together. And the whole game is inspired by that spirit of optimism and togetherness. You see, it's all made to be played with two characters. You can play it alone, or you can play it in co-op with a friend, but there's always two characters there, sharing one yarn and working together to get through this adventure. This game, it's quite different from the first. It's, it's both friendlier and more challenging, but above all, it's a lot more playful. And, and we think it's a worthy successor. And I want to show it to you now, so I, I brought some help. Uh, so please welcome Michael to the stage. He's a producer at Coldwood. And we're going to try to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about, about how you can play the game in, in co-op with yourself, essentially. <laughs> so this wasn't prepared. I... There we are. So when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through the more fast-paced segments of the game. And we actually tried to include a bit more of those, because we figured that since it's a co-op game, we wanted to have more like thrill and danger and kind of wow moments, uh, places that were like fun and exciting. And then when you get to the more puzzly areas like this, when you're problem solving, you can split apart into two and switch back and forth between the two characters because that's how we've essentially designed all the problems and puzzles of the game, that you're always working together and helping each other out and utilizing this bond between you to overcome any obstacle that you come across. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump in at this point. Yeah, come join me. So um, I'm going to be the re red one. OK. You'll be the blue one. I'll be blue. A little celeb celebratory flip there. And the bird is back. Oops. Okay. Playing, it, playing it safely now. <laughs> Oops. I'll swing. All right. Nice. 
And I'll catch you. There you go. Can I swing now? Okay, you go ahead. Oh. Okay, this is the scary part. Let's see if we can do it. Got it? Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh. Oh. Faster. <laughs> oh, well sweet. Well done. Okay, I'll, I'll go up and distract the grass. You can... I'll sneak up here. Okay, your, your turn. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> keep, no, keep him over to the left. <laughs> now I'll go. All right. No. I'll pull you up. Here. There you go. <sighs> now we can breathe again. Yeah, finally. <laughs> or can we? <laughs> So that's a, that's a quick little look at um, Unravel 2. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I really hope you like it. And um, before I go, I just want to send some, some love to the team back home because working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort in so many levels, and everybody has worked so hard. So, there, there's a bunch of us from Coldwood here, and, and thank you to those, and thank you to everybody back home, and thank you. Love you. Thank you, Martin, and the brilliant team at Coldwood. The great, the game is really strong. These guys have done an amazing job, and it's clear that they have a lot of passion, and I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kids. But what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep, you heard that right. You'll be able to take these two Yarnies on their next big adventure starting today. The game is finished, it's out. <laughs> So thank you, Martin, and thank you to the team at Coldwood. Back in 2015, we started on this journey with the original Unravel to seek out the most creative, independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our way of helping these creators bring their unique games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, if you remember, Joseph Fares was up here on stage representing his team at Hazelight and The Way Out. And I think we all kind of remember that. Um, and you might even remember him from the Game Awards as well. I think I did. Anyhow, in March, that game caught fire. It's, it was in it, it's innovative, it's fun, and it's something fresh and new. And you all loved it. We saw over two million players in the first two weeks. And A Way Out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team are expanding and moving into a new studio. So stories like this drive our industry, and it's why we will continue to work with independent developers to help them realize their dreams. Which leads us to our next EA Originals title.
from a little game studio in Berlin called Joe My Games. When I met this team and I saw the game, I was instantly drawn to how personal this story was. It's one that carries a very powerful and important message, and it's unlike anything we have ever done. So please welcome Connie Gepper to the stage from Joe My Games to tell you more about Sea of Solitude. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> I still remember um, during the pitch how enthusiastic Patrick was, and that afterwards, like our whole team, including me, were super excited. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> I'm pretty excited, maybe a little too excited. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, we are Yomai, uh, a small indie game studio from Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude, or SOS as we call it. The whole journey from the very first concept to actually becoming a part of EA Originals is simply amazing. Let me tell you more about our game. When humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. This is at the core of everything you would see, hear, and hopefully feel while playing SOS. What makes this underlying concept so important and so unique is that nearly every human being can at least somehow relate to or remember the feeling of being lonely. In my case, I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. I think, as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. Um, I'm still amazed how like, the concept seems to just float out of me, like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think this is also why so many people can instantly connect with the game, because it's not a made-up story, even though that it takes place in a fantastic setting. In SOS, we try to show how people experience different kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, and family see those who struggle. We achieve all this in playful ways, so that players who want to simply enjoy a fantastic experience can do so, but player who wants to look a bit deeper can reveal a whole emotional world beneath it all. Sea of Solitude is about a young woman named Kay who is suffering from such strong loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside and she becomes a monster. The game is about finding out why this happened to her, but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, the goal is to bring all those emotions into balance. Some needs to become bigger, some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace even your destructive part or your self-doubt in the same way you embrace your joy or your hope. This is what being human is all about. And that's what our game is all about. Thank you. Is this real? In this world that I live in is empty and cold. The loneliness cuts me. And tortures my soul I'm no child of destiny And no fortune son I've just chased you so long now I'm too weak to run A new day is here But nothing is new Alone in my room I tremble for you. Yeah, I'm the one. But I'm
I'm not the only one. We are the one. We can shut you down and we can put you on an island. Crossover. Gather. Game. And we're balling. Be ready. Because we're coming at you with the squad. Say it how you want. Trust the process. Run as one. Call next. All four be the answer. As long as you hold your course. Just remember though, wherever you call home, whatever you fit, or however you fall, you're on my court. I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one. And this is my squad. My name's Shay Kivlin, aka Young Kiv. I'm from Seattle, Washington. The only goal of mine is really to win the Madden belt. Kiv's been going after that belt since 2016. At some point, he's gonna need to get out of this quarterfinal and claim a major. It's a big night for Young Kiv. He's been stuck at the quarterfinals. And here he is now in his first championship game, looking to accomplish a goal. Third and four, throws it low. T.Y. drops it. That was a phenomenal read, and Trini's got the lead. 40 to 19. I hate losing way more than I love winning. Oh, we have an incredible matchup. It's a rematch. Not be the one to Touchdown, Kev! He throws it high! And young Kev is going to be your champion. Can I play you again? You want to get smacked again on TV? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Every face, no! Madden 18 right. champion. He's finally done it. Good, baby. How you doing? I've been good. You still recovered from that butt whooping? Wow, already starting. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, as you guys can see, king of touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that a lot. Um, as you guys know, this is Young Kid, Madden 18, Madden champion. Like, give it up for Young Kid, y'all. Give it up. <laughs> young Kid. How has it been, you know, your success and your path, you know, to where you're at today? It's, uh, I've always been a competitor. Um, when I was in high school, I was playing baseball, I hurt my arm. So then I picked up Madden, and at first, I was really bad. I was getting blown out online, but I kept at it. I put more and more time into it. Eventually, I made my first tournament, but I had a big decision. It was the same time as my graduation. Wow, okay. So the key to be the number one player in Madden is to hurt your arm in baseball. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you said you had the decision to, be to, uh, to go to your graduation. So like, what did you do? I chased that money. I still got my diploma, but I chased that money. <laughs> there you go. We're out here chasing money. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, now the past two, you know, the past few years, how has it been for you? I know you had some ups and downs. It's been tough. I've had a lot of devastating losses. I've been so close so many times. I made the final on TV and got blown out by all those losses. It made me gain a lot of mental toughness, and that's why I got this belt. That's awesome. I, that belt is so amazing. There's a lot of, you know, bling on that belt for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, EA Play, you know, first look at the Madden 19 trailer. Super excited. It's going to be so fun. It's lit. I honestly wish I could stay right here and talk to you guys forever, but I'm not going to board you guys. We're going to go out. I'm going to try to take this belt, you know, round two. So we're out. Have a good day. You've worked your whole life to get to moments like these. To the very top of the mountain. You battle through the pain and failure. All just to get to this place. Where you've been told, legends are born. You fall so you can rise. And you rise so that you can truly see. See that it was really...
Never about reaching the end of the road at all. But about all the moments that got you here. So, you were in their position. Would you let the moment define you? Or will you define the moment? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Nathanius, professional shoutcaster, here alongside Redwood Studios general manager, Michael Martinez. How are you doing today? I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, we're gonna do this presentation a little bit differently and give you your first look at a brand new mobile game in a live winner take all head to head match. <laughs> Michael, why don't you tell us the rules? Sure thing. The objective is straightforward destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap, it, tap the destination, unit automatically moves there. The most efficient way to destroy the opponent's base is with this giant nuclear missile in the center of the map. Control the missile by standing on a majority of the control points. A bar fills up while the missile is possessed. Whoever controls the missile when the bar fills up will fire the missile. It takes two missiles to destroy the enemy's base and win. That's it. Sounds great, Michael. Well, enough talking about it. Let's, let's get to this match. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an awesome matchup lined up for you here today. Fighting for the blue side of the room. If you could please give a cheer for one of the most formidable RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. Yes. His opponent fighting for the red side of the room. A competitive mobile gaming phenomenon. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Nick at Night. Now, Mike, it's going to be a real clash of these gaming styles yeah, and the competitive backgrounds that these players have. It should be a great totally. match. It really is. I can't wait. All right. Are the players ready? Let's uh, get this thing going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. Let's kick this off. Uh, Nice little strategy game for those yes. of you out there. It's a good genre. I'm very excited for this. The players are loading in and loading we are ready to the kick match. Here we go. this off as the players' bases have been deployed and the action begins like any strategy game. Mm -hmm. Economy will be the focus. We right. have a harvester to start things off. Nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too crazy. Now the infantry is going to come out to hold that top point. Both players, of course, trying to take that position. Nick and Knight being able to reach it a little bit first in a strategy game. That flank position, that in control is going from the top side. Also very important as Nick and Knight's forces have to circle around the center. Right, let's see if he's able to create a two-on-one. Is he able to get there? Looks like he's getting there. Here comes GDI with, uh, with uh, Rhino. Yeah, going for the anti-infantry, and like any strategy game, the units that you're going to use when you deploy them will have a huge impact. Your micromanagement of your forces and protecting that economy as well. Yep, Nick and Knight with some attack bikes in the top. There he is. And in control, placing the turret on the top right side to help cover that Rhino as attack bikes move towards the northwest position. We can see that the missile is beginning to ready and firing that. That takes out half your base. The most important objective on the map is to hold those control zones. Right, and in control making a lot of progress to that far right side of the match. Now, he's done a great job of holding that down with the turret, and now he's redeploying his vehicles to the south side, bringing out more infantry to deal with the attack bikes. And as that economy ramps up, of course, we're seeing bigger, more powerful units come out. We have there the drill pod coming in the left side to help there it flank. Is. Putting those some flamethrowers, flame right, absolutely. Again, those are going to tear through those infantry. Yeah, and in control brings out his first tank that's going to be used to try and help push back these smaller forces as he makes his way to the south side. That missile passing halfway now. Oh, Both zone, two okay. zones in control of Nick at night. He will have the missiles. We see it starts to point towards in control's base. Let's see if in control can get around to that top corner, able to halt that missile. He does contest the missile, putting it into the yellow position. Now, very important, of course, blocking the, the pathing of those units is another big factor for the strategy. Holding those locations is so crucial as in control begins to secure the northwest spot. Another tank's going to come out from Nick at night to take it out, but now he's bringing out the pit bull as well to help lock down that north position. This missile is very, very close to firing. Let's see what's going to happen. 
with another turret in control flanks. He takes the top, that missile and that fires, fires. Off. Wow. And Nick at night, one shot away from being knocked out here as the next one will start to ready up in just a moment's time. In control's very heavy artillery forces doing a great job at taking right. control of the map. Yep. And we can see as more of Nick and Knight's forces move up towards that north position, those harvesters, of course, very crucial, very important to protect those as your economy allows you to get these big late game units. The units are gonna come out a bit more slowly as you get more of them on the field. But in control, just spreading his forces out, trying to hold this advantage that he's had so yeah. far. Nick and Knight is trying to get in there, but there's a great turret placement from in control, blocking and just ripping through again those infantry. And we see in control now moving his tank towards this another drill side. pod we're seeing with some flame tanks. Yeah, bring in the flank. Of course, those flame guys do amazing damage to the infantry, help to clean that out. Meanwhile, two more tanks coming out from Nick at Night to try and secure those positions. He brings up the laser infantry on the south side as well yeah. to deal with that tank, going for counters, trying to scout out and see what your opponent is doing and make the proper response. It's so important in strategy. Absolutely. Nick at Night cruising around, thinking about harassing those harvesters, coming around the far side for those rhinos. Looks like he's really pressing it. And we see that missile is starting to get close to wow, firing with this. three zones in control for Nick and Knight. Looking to set things back the other way. In control trying to rally his forces around. He doesn't want to engage with just one or two units. He wants to move all of them together, create a good flank position and take over that side. And we're seeing control. the first mech units from in control. This is the Wolverine. Gonna rip, and this is a watch out for this missile. And Nick and Knight's gonna goes. fire that one off and settle all right. for Next missile is gonna end it. Next missile Which wins, player? let's see what happens. We'll have control of Wolverines, as you pointed out, for in control coming out to try and deal with these forces. But uh, Nick at Knight's done a great job of getting map presence and now also harassing the economy of there in control. There he is, yep, wow. Okay, we've got our first mammoth tank on the board. If, Nick, if in control can get this in position, he's gonna do some serious damage. That missile just passed halfway ready. He's also bringing out his first air unit. Wow, to deal with those a people. lot going on here. It's got a lot of range, that big boy. It, in control just needs to hold This it missile is nearly gonna fire. It can That's be stolen at any point. Where is it gonna go? Is he gonna be able to get it off? He's got it, Max. There Max. it is! He's gonna take it! Defeating Nick at that was legit. one. <laughs> Dude, that was epic. <laughs> Amazing! What a match! Thank you so much. That was awesome. Any thoughts, Thank guys? You. I just came to make mammoth tanks, so I've, I've done my job. Yeah. Absolutely. That was Thank awesome. So we much. saw a little bit of everything right there. Perfect. Yeah. Let's hear it for Nathanius, Nick and Knight, and In Control. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw was the worldwide reveal of Command and Conquer Rivals. Yeah. Rivals reimagines the real-time strategy experience for mobile. We're giving players complete, continuous control of their armies in quick, competitive, head-to-head -head matches that are fueled by skill and strategy. Now, Rivals will be coming to iOS and Android devices, but I'm excited to announce that Android players can play the pre-alpha today. So head to the Google Play Store, search Command & Conquer Rivals. The studio has been having an absolute blast playing this game, and we can't wait for you to play. Please let us know what you think. Thank you. Command and Conquer for a new generation. Now, before we close the show with a spectacular epic anthem, I wanted to share a few final things. I am blessed to be able to work with some of the most creative people on the planet who come to work every day to create amazing entertainment. And what I can say about all of those teams and what I can say about us is that we are always trying to learn and listen and strive to be better. 
And so as you look at the 10 experiences that you're going to see today, and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make. And that for every moment that you invest, you feel like you are rewarded and you are given value for that investment. And most importantly, that the games are fun that we move past the grind, and that these are experiences that truly enhance your lives. And so as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know that we want to be better and that we want to make great games. And that as much as we love making games and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program, where we show the world how the power of play can be a positive force for social impact. Millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in our games, logging millions of hours in support of Play to Give. And to celebrate that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world. A world where representation and equality are not something we strive for, they are the standards. And where bullying and exclusion are not an everyday thread. These three organizations, the United Nations, He For She, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center, and Ditch the Label, an anti-bullying organization, all are doing great work, and we're proud to support them through Play to Give. That and thank you for your support. Thousands of us at EA and millions of you together doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us and thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Now without further ado, let's take a look at Anthem. The gods vanished and left our world in chaos, creating, altering, destroying. The anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. Couple times and it's still cool every time I see it. 
So I know all of you, like me, have had tons of questions about Anthem since last year because we're all Bioware fans. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the rest of the show, and we're going to take a deep dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring out some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rutzart. For coming out today, just yeah, got a little game you. to show, right? Yep, Lots it's gonna fun. be very exciting. So, Casey, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So, now we know that you all started, or Casey, you started your career at BioWare mm -hmm. way back in the day, but you yep. took a couple years off. But before you came back, you actually worked on Anthem before you left. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back, it's awesome to be making. Games for Bioware fans, you know, we have the best fans, uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it, and, you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio, and that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about, you know, what is the evolution of a Bioware game? And we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character, but we also wanted to do something that was, you know, more of a dynamic and living world, a game that would change every time you came back and played it. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with story sort of bolted on this side, but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Now you can build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the core of the game. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world, the world is really dangerous, and you're focused on your mission. And this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting about this, it's unique for, uh, for Anthem, is that this is a living, shared world. So whether there's weather, or uh, it's nighttime, what we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at, a, at a moment is seeing the same thing. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. But then when I finish my mission, I come back to a base like Fort Tarsus. And this is a single player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards, I talk to some characters, I experience the choices of my action. And this is where your story really lives and breathes. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so that we can add story for years to come. So one of the first things that we hear when, um, from our community is they want to continue to play in our worlds. When they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age, players want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment with a character that you've grown to love, or uh, an event in the world that uh, deepens the lore, or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So Kathleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, from a writing perspective, since you are the lead writer, can you speak to what it's like to create a new world like Anthem from the beginning? Well, what's really exciting for us, um, and not just the writers, but all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind their massive tools, and those tools are in constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic monsters. It's a dangerous environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, to be safe in. 
Now, something I think a lot of players out there maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the process of creating a game like from scratch? Yeah, it's something we've done a few times at BioWare. Um, you know, and really the hardest part is getting started, just kind of getting off the blank page. Uh, so what we try to do is we think about the new experiences that we're trying to unlock for players. So like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? So that's where we start. And then once we think about those things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games, is that you actually get to build a whole fictional universe that's meant to bring out a certain experience. And then once we do that, then we kind of, we still need to build all the rest of the stuff, and what unlocks us creatively is to think about like principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our new world. And then from there, we can actually go and build out every last detail. Yeah, and one of the uh, unique challenges for Anthem is that it's a world, an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, whether the uh, storms, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, it's a really great concept to write for because what it means is it gives us the opportunity to drop into the world, almost in real time, a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. And that could be anything from gameplay to lore. I mean, the, all of the moving parts in the dynamic world sound really cool the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy beasts. So you are a freelancer, uniquely skilled to pilot these, exo, these javelin exo suits. And uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, have uh, they've discovered a way they think to weaponize the anthem of creation. And so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now, I've heard you call this power armor a couple different things. Is it, a, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the, what's the canon term here? We call them javelins, and there are four, and uh, they each have uh, unique abilities. There's the ranger, and then there's the colossus, the interceptor, and finally, the storm. Yeah, so uh, each javelin gives you a different way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is, like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, a pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood, based on the mission you want to engage in, or the, or the javelins that your friends are using. Um, so really what this allows us to do is we built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world. Uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. The Ranger is a more generalized suit, uh, able to, uh, to do a lot of different things, uh, use, really designed for up close and personal combat, one-on-one uh, -on -one for the most part. The Ranger is more specialized, but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. I, I'm just gonna say the storm looks like it's gonna be my favorite. I'm sure you guys out there are picking your face right now too. Um, so the javelins look awesome, but we're gonna take a couple questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. And the first one is gonna be from at it's sweet Nicole, who asks, as a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Yeah, so we really want p players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their, their uh, javelin plays, through gear and uh, weapons, but also being able to personalize the way that it looks, uh, both through paint jobs as well as changing the actual uh, geometry of the suit itself. We want teams to be able to do this as well. Mm. And because you're going to be using a javelin for a long period of time, we really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up, because actually, uh, Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. Monetization, how, when, loot box, cosmetics? Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always gonna know what you're gonna buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So no loot boxes, no ability to pay for power. Yay. So that means no ability to spend money on gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. 
But even more important than that, we want to make sure that Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time, new story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey. We talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about you know, the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. So um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. So you know, I think here we're going to see the, the Colossus you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay, if we can have a look at that. So heavy artillery, being really strong you know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the ranger shooting down from above. And then they're using com you know, combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around, you're swimming and flying as well. So it's interesting because at the Slate Tones wants to know, how will you balance multiplayer with single player storytelling? So Anthem's really built around trying to combine the, uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that, uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just experience the story, we're, you're going to be able to do that. Now going out into an open world like this, uh, by yourself is going to be a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Okay, that's good to know. If you want to roll solo, you can, but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your seats. How about we show a little gameplay? Yeah? You guys want that? All right, so um, Kathleen, I think you're going to set this up for us? I will. So, um, the, you're, you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villainy. The Scars have put together an acid-based super weapon, so you've got to take them out. So, you start in the Strider, which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. You have a conversation with your crew, Halleck, Faye, and Owen, and you'll hear Owen, he's going to talk us through the mission as we, as we experience it here. Um, and yeah, then you just get into your javelin suit and you head out with your friends. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me about Anthem today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. Answer. Time to get to work! Faye said these bastards made some kind of acid. They're using it as a weapon. So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. Right, checking out the scar camp some more. Weapons! Oh, and the, and the turrets! Better move quickly.
There's a shaker relic. Wait, something's odd. Get a closer look, would you? See those radiant pieces of energy? They're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Loads of scars nearby. Be careful. Turn them to the relic. You've got to silence it fast. It's got silent. Disaster averted. Do you think we get a bonus for... Wait, something's happening. What the hell was that? I think... That was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it, and we should find the source. And that was, uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I'm sure the question on everyone's minds, when do we get to play? So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019 on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So mark your calendars, everybody. Fire off your tweets. Thank you so much again to Casey and the entire Bioware team. I know you guys have that awesome theater outside, so I will see you guys there. All right. Give it there. up for Casey Hudson, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at their studios back home around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, some of what you saw today, you guys have to wait to play. But you guys, EA has so much available right now. Now, for those of you keeping score, you can get your free trial of FIFA 18's World Cup today. And Andrew told us about the free trial of Origin Access. Yarny is back with a buddy in Unravel 2, which is also available today. Plus, you can take on your friends in Command & Conquer Rivals starting today as well. Now, that's a lot of, a lot of available stuff that's out today. Is anybody ready to go home and download anything? No? You're like, I just want to go outside into the fan fest. I get it, I get it. So uh, I want to let you guys know to keep your streams going because in just a few moments, the FIFA 18 World Cup Live Tournament is going to begin. I'm going to head outside and check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down to EA Play today and watching the press conference, and have a great weekend.